Hello and welcome to this Affinity Photo tutorial and in this tutorial I want to look at making a very simple Drost effect. Now I'm very sorry if I've mispronounced that, it's apparently derived from a Dutch word and basically the effect is you have your main image and that main image is repeated repeatedly within the image itself so you get multiple versions of the same image repeating itself and this is a very simple example um, whereby you get someone to hold a picture frame or a mirror frame or something like that and you take out the center of that image uh, frame and then put in more copies of that image within the frame it's quite an easy process to do and this is a very simple example of that if you look at the internet where I put in Drost effect and images you can see there's much more complex ways of doing this like this one chap here has done it with the hands drawing the images that are repeatedly going in the book sometimes you get people where they've adapted the frame so it goes into a spiral like this or um, I have seen one where it is an actual spiral I think it's further down here um, a sort of endless spiral like that but I mean it's basically named after a sort of a Dutch coffee called Drost where the picture of the nun is holding the same sort of image on a tray so that's where the name comes from anyway so as far as I can understand so coming coming back to this image now I've got this from Pixabay and I will add a link to this particular image in the description for this video like I said it's going to be a very simple version of the Drost effect and if you are going to sort of set this up yourself where you get a, someone to hold a picture frame or a mirror frame the only real requirement is but obviously the background is not necessarily a problem but it's just making sure that their hands and fingers do not come over the frame inside of the frame too much because then you've got to fiddle around with trying to cut around their fingers and I would imagine a round frame would make it that much harder but a little bit more difficult as well so this is what we're aiming for and this is the start image where like I said from Pixabay and the center is already blank anyway so you don't have to worry about that so much so once you have your start image and I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this three times now various ways of duplicating um, you can come up to layer and duplicate um, or if it's not selected as such but you when you do make a selection you could use this menu for duplicating the selection or control and J you can also right click on the layer itself come down to duplicate or you can just use the keyboards and do control and J or command and J on a Mac and just do that three times so you have four copies of the image now I'm only going to do three versions in here but if depending on your picture and what you want to do with it you could do more I and mean, because if I come back to this one here so I've got the the three copies in here but there is a little bit of space in the center there where I could have done another one but to my mind you, it comes a point when it's just so far back you can't see it anymore so I've only gone with the going back three times so once I've got my three images there I'm going to turn off I turn off all of them for the moment and highlight the background start image and what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the inside of this frame now what I'm going to use is the lasso freehand selection tool it is on the same menu it probably by default starts out with the rectangle marquee tool but it's in that menu and just come down to freehand selection tool and then up here you have various options and the one I'm going to go for is polygonal so I'm going to click on that make sure that's highlighted 
and I'm also going to make sure that anti-alias has got a tick in it and then it's just a case of selecting around this box I'm just going to zoom in a bit so I can see that better and I'm going to start somewhere here in the middle this is a nice easy place to see where I'm starting and then as you sort of drag across it or bring this sort of line with it and then next place you click and then the beauty of like using a frame like this it's nice and straight so you're not doing lots of little jumps and clicks you just get to her hand there I think that's almost it, you just make sure I've got there we go, and then over to this chap's hand here and then almost there, and then back to where you started, just click on the same place and you will get that selection line I'm not going to bother refining or anything like that partly because we've got a nice white background and it's going to sort of um, not show up so badly if it sort of goes over the edge or doesn't go over the edge because the background of this is white anyway but if you're going to be using a more cluttered background you may possibly have to just make a better selection than I have so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to with that selected I'm going to press Ctrl and J and it's going to make a new layer with that selected inside it so I can now press Ctrl and D to deselect that area you can also do that from select up here menu and come down to deselect so I'm going to highlight the first layer that I've hidden, make that visible and I'm going to just click and drag down this layer and put it inside and make it a child of this newly made selection layer and do that, I'll just drop that in and open up the group and this is the layer that is selected and let me just zoom out if I come to the move tool we have the bounding box here that shows the size uh, you know where the size of that image is and I'm going to reduce that in size and I'm going to hold down the control key while I reduce this in size so it stays in proportion so I just hold down the control key and drag this down and as you can see it's already starting to show up inside that image there so just case of now resizing moving a bit of rotating in this particular case because they've got the picture on the slant so I'm just going to rotate that round and then just position it how I want and like I said because this has got a white background and you've got a white background on the frame it doesn't matter whether I bring this down here or over here or, or however I want to do it but if you have a cluttered background in your main image you may need to sort of make a better selection and you may not have so much leeway in the movement of where you place it so I think I'm fairly happy with that it's maybe just a tad not askew but again it doesn't matter a great deal right I'll just lower this down slightly so I've got a bit of room above that chap's head so that is your first picture and let me just come off there so we've got rid of the bounding box so it's just a case of let me just shut this group I'm sure that is the group that is highlighted for the next part and it's just a case of repeat the whole process again so I'm just zoom in, come back to the lasso tool and make a selection of this smaller picture and 
and imagine also that as you get to the smaller and smaller versions of the image that you're going to be putting inside the frame the less fussy you can be about the selecting oh damn see if I can reselect that Let's see whether it'll let me no I'll have to do that again sorry I double clicked when I shouldn't have done the trials and tribulation of doing these things quickly just need to remember to click once when I get there right so you've made your next selection so again I'm going to press Control and J to make a new sort of group and it will be a group now because it's got already got the layer from this group duplicated as well and then we just press Control and D to deselect and I'll zoom out again and again highlight the next hidden layer make it visible drag it down into this group and when you drag it in just go and make sure that that blue line only comes to the start of the icon there so that will now be inside that group come to the move tool and like before hold down the control key command key whichever computer you're on roughly position it and then I'm going to zoom in so I can do the positioning a bit better right, rotate it round and then just reduce the size Right, fairly happy with that. So I can close that group, highlight the top of the group, come back to the selection tool, and for the last time, make a selection of the frame that's in the center. Come back to where it started, make sure I click just once and then press Ctrl and J to make another group of that selection. Press Ctrl and D to deselect and we'll zoom out. Highlight the last image I want to put in and drag this down and in to that top group. This is the one that is highlighted. Come to the move tool, hold down the control key, reduce its size, put it roughly where I want it, zoom in so I can then position it better. Do me thinks. Zoom out. And there you have it. You have the Drost effect just three times. Like I said, I could do a fourth one and put another one in there, but there comes a point where it doesn't really become necessary in my opinion. Um, but it's just a basically, it's a very simple process of select and drop the image into the selection that you've made and just keep repeating the process until you are happy like I said this is a very simple version if you want to sort of do the more elaborate ones then you're going to have to sort of tinker around and work out a way to do that so thank you for watching and goodbye <laughs>